a well-known spa resort in Cuba's fertile province of Piñar del Rio, advertised as an idyllic location in glossy brochures. Legend has it that long ago, a slave was miraculously cured here of a disease akin to leprosy. This was attributed not to the good offices of the town's patron saint, but to the properties of the local waters, rich in sulfur, where the man used to bathe. Since then, the fortunes of San Diego de los Baños have waxed and waned. It's now a bustling center of three and a half thousand, many of them young people, but it knew its heyday under Spanish colonial rule. However, the local spa, rebuilt in the early 50s, has helped keep San Diego on the tourist trail. Cubans and a growing trickle of foreigners, mainly from Spain and Latin America, make the pilgrimage to seek treatment or just to relax. They had illustrious predecessors this century and earlier, though few as famous as Che. At the center's library, a small book entitled Notes on the History of Public Health gives an insight into the town's glittering past. Napoleon's personal physician may have been a precursor, but by the end of the 19th century, anyone who was someone in Cuba was likely to travel to San Diego. Hotels like this one, built in the 1920s, sprang up. There were up to eight at one time, as the elite of the day sought relief for rheumatism, skin problems, and respiratory ailments. After the revolution, when the wealthy fled the new socialist state, ordinary people took over the facilities which had been created for the upper class. 35 years on, they're still in the majority. For 19-year-old Vladimir, who's suffering from an acute form of arthritis, San Diego is a lifeline. It's the best thing that's happened to me. All the personnel, medical, paramedical and others are very good. They don't only help with the physical problems, but also with the human problems, to carry on living and fighting for my life. Vladimir is one of many Cubans receiving treatment here. But San Diego is also at the forefront of a wider experiment in health tourism. With its highly developed health care system, Cuba is in a position to extend to foreign nationals at a price they can afford, services available free of charge to its own citizens. On offer here, a full range of facilities supervised by specialists in physical and mental welfare. Strong emphasis is also given to prevention of disease. It was when the United States was the dominant economic power on the island that the Mirador Hotel was built here. It was renovated last year to accommodate new demand from overseas. The director of the baths is a specialist in physical rehabilitation. She's worked here for 15 years. The main objective of our baths or spa is health. Not just for those who are sick, but also for those who are healthy, so they improve their quality of life. The services are promoted by a organization called Servimed. The aim is to capitalize on three and a half decades of investment and achievements in medical research and development. The development of health tourism has been possible because health services in the country have achieved such recognition internationally. No hay ningún misticismo, no hay ninguna cosa, diríamos, sobrenatural en esto. Nosotros podemos hacerlo precisamente porque la medicina cubana es social. Y no permite, diríamos, unir grupos de, por ejemplo, el caso de la rehabilitación neurológica, que es una de las cosas que más nosotros tenemos, nos permite tener a disposición de pacientes neurólogos, clínicos, fisiatras, psicólogos, foniatras, y abordar de una forma integral el tratamiento de cada paciente en específico. Disorders of the central nervous system are treated at this medical complex in Havana. It was a military hospital but now it's open to everyone, including foreign patients. Since 1987, Cuban surgeons have been using neurotransplant techniques and minimal access surgery to control the symptoms of Parkinson's disease. And further research paid off recently with a surgical intervention hailed as a first in the world.
¿Cómo está el temblor de esa mano? 30-year-old Jorge Muñoz, a Cuban neurosurgeon, teamed up with a Spanish colleague for the event. At 57, Alberto Escola had had the disease for 17 years. He was on strong medication, which made him sleep, but couldn't stop the shaking. He was desperate for help. Se hizo esta cirugía a nivel experimental. Con muy buenos resultados. Y pasamos a, a, a humanos, pero que a pequeña escala, so o sea, está en una fase de ensayo clínico controlado. No es un procedimiento que está generalizado ni en nuestro país ni en otros países. Two weeks later, Alberto Escola felt he'd been given a new life. The surgeons had successfully probed deep in his brain and reversed the Porque symptoms si of Parkinson's on the right side of his body. Si no he looked forward to the next stage, which would cosas. stop the tremors Porque on the left. Cuba also leads the way in the treatment of a disease known as night blindness, which may affect one in every 200 people in the world. As with Parkinson's, there's no known cure for retinosis pigmentaria, but its progress can be arrested with minor surgery. The treatment pioneered in Cuba is highly successful, and there's growing demand from abroad. This Peruvian patient missed his checkup due one year after surgery. Although I didn't come back last year, things have remained steady and even improved. My field of vision especially. I certainly don't have any problems on this side or this side. It's maintained itself and even improved. I'm sure of that. You can't fool yourself. Heather Cunningham from Canada is 26. She learned of the treatment offered by Professor Pelias from a television program back home. She's having her first checkup a year after the operation. The disease should not progress any more. Puede presentarse cualquier otro proceso, otra any como other cualquier process otra persona. may occur, no. as for anybody else. Pero but la the retinosis, retinosis pigmentaria, pigmentaria is controlada. under control. Heather's close to tears of joy. The next checkup's in two years' time. Emotion all around, and relief for her mother and father, who knew Havana before the revolution and the US embargo that followed. The eye clinic was designed as a fee-paying institution. Cubans with similar problems are referred to their own area hospitals. This center, however, caters for Cubans and foreigners. It's also unique. On arrival, patients are briefed on the use of lotions and ointments they'll need for the treatment of the stress-related skin diseases which brought them here. Vitiligo, psoriasis, and alopecia, sudden hair loss, as in the case of this eight-year-old child diagnosed only two weeks earlier. Professor Carlos Millares Cayo discovered in the human placenta a substance which influenced skin pigmentation, a breakthrough which led to the development of a treatment for vitiligo. This teenager had white patches on her face and large areas of her body when she first visited the center. Two years on, she's on the road to full recovery. Progress is monitored. If achieved, and it often is, cure is forever. No relapses and no more medicines. I believe the importance of our treatment is that we've discovered two substances in the human placenta which can cure diseases that were thought incurable until now, vitiligo and psoriasis, with a high incidence of cure, 84% for vitiligo and 78% for psoriasis without secondary effects. It can be used by all children, pregnant women, elderly people, and it's very effective. Stress may have a different effect on the nervous system. In psoriasis, it causes an overproduction of epidermic cells. But the success of the treatment is bringing increasing numbers of foreign patients, up to 100 a month, from as many different countries. The Sierra Garcia treats an impressive array of complaints, including eye, ear, nose and throat infections, multiple sclerosis, schizophrenia and heart disease. It even offers plastic surgery. Manuelis Ortiz is an executive secretary in the diplomatic corps. She was burnt many years ago and says the skin on her face used to look like her hands. She had surgery, a facelift, five days before this interview. But her scars are already healing.
Maria Miranda is 53. She had a facelift for purely cosmetic reasons and is clearly happy with the outcome. Asked how she feels, she replies, perfect. One might be tempted to say the same thing about San Diego, once the haunt of the rich and famous. Like them, Norma de Borja from El Salvador finds good reason to be a regular visitor. In my country, we also receive good attention because it is the Latin way. But I think the Cuban attention is also humanitarian. I have received treatment in Mexico and the United States, but I feel more satisfied in Cuba.